So last meeting, we discussed up to number three for thin wall pressure vessels. So today, let's just continue with number four. So number four, a water tank 22 feet in diameter is made from steel plates that are half an inch thick. Find the maximum height to which the tank may be filled if the circumferential stress is limited to 6,000 PSI. The specific weight of water is 62.4 pounds per cubic feet. So we have a tank and we're looking for the maximum height of water wherein we can fill the tank with. So first, let's write our given water tank 22 feet in diameter. So D, 22 feet. You also have thickness of your plate. So that's T, one half. Inch. And then circumferential stress, so that's your tangential stress as well, 6,000 PSI. So that's sigma T, 6,000 PSI. Okay. Specific weight of water is 62.4 pounds per cubic feet. Specific weight is the same as unit weight, and its symbol is gamma. So 62.4 pounds per cubic feet. Okay, so let's try to solve for this. And we can assume that the water is applying uniform pressure. So assume uniform pre pressure distribution. Okay. Okay, and in assuming uniform pressure distribution, let's have the following figure. So again, we have a tank, right? I'm going to cut it in half and isolate the left side. Okay, let's do that. This is your cylinder, okay, lengthwise, and this is the height of your water. Okay, there. Your water is up to this point, therefore, we can call that the height, right? There. Now, if we assume uniform pressure distribution. That means that we'll have our regular way of analyzing this. We're in this is your hydrostatic force, force due to the pressure in the tank or force due to your water. And then, of course, that force will be resisted by your tensile resisting forces. Something like that. It's your T, and then this is your T. And then this is the area experiencing stress. Now, if you notice, that looks a lot like what we have here, okay? Wherein you have your force acting on your 
projected area and stress along the material. So therefore, we can just use the equation for tangential stress, sigma t equals p over 2p. Now, the question is, what is that pressure? Because it's not given, right? Looking back. So our first goal is to figure out the pressure. Now, this is pressure due to your liquid, your water. And we've discussed that in our previous example, right? The pressure due to a liquid is simply raw GH. Now, in our given, raw isn't given. Instead, it's unit weight. But one thing to note is that unit weight, your sigma, is simply equal to raw G. Okay, so pressure equals raw GH, right? So instead of that, we'll use pressure equals gamma H. Okay, so let's sub that here. Pressure equals gamma H, gamma being 62.4. Now, the problem is that's in pounds per cubic feet. Our pressure is in PSI. Uh, our stress is in PSI. So I have to convert that. Okay, so let's add a conversion factor. So this is pound per cubic feet, right? And then conversion factor. So pound as is, we need to convert feet. So one foot equals 12 inches. However, this is in cube, so I just got to cube that as well. Okay, and then we have H here at the end. And then you can solve for that, or you can keep that as is. Okay, I'm going to keep it as is and just sub it in my, in my equation later. So now I have an equation for P. I can finally use your stress. Tangential stress is PD over 2T. Okay, tangential, tangential stress being 6,000, so just sub that there. So 6,000 equals pressure. Again, this is my equation for pressure, so I'll just copy that. 62.4 times my conversion factor, 1 over 12 cubed times H. Okay, so that's just your pressure. And then multiplied by diameter D. Diameter is given, and that is 22 feet. Again, that's in feet. Everything should be in inches, so I'll convert that by just multiplying by 12, okay? And then all over 2, thickness given in inches, so no problem there, 1 half. From this, please solve what's H. Correct verse. Well, and correct. Um, Pauline, Tony. 629.37. Now, this is in feet. I'm sorry, this is in inches. Okay, it wasn't specified in the problem what should our final unit be. So, we can have either inch or you can also have feet. So, to get feet, just divide by 12, you should get uh, 52.44. Okay, so either of the two unless otherwise specified in your problem. Okay, so that's one way to solve for problems like this. Now, this is an idealization of what's happening for a pressure due to liquid. What's actually happening, however, is different, okay? So, you wanna know? Now, instead of assuming uniform pressure distribution, let's solve using the actual pressure distribution. Because this is assuming pressure due to water is the same all throughout the span of your cylinder. But that's not true. If you can visualize, let's say you have this tank here filled with water, 
up to the edge and it's free space, meaning open lid. Pressure at this point is simply zero, right? Pressure on the water surface is zero. It's not the maximum or it's not equal to the entire pressure of your system. So pressure zero at the top. And then remember pressure increases the deeper you go. So zero at the top and then at the bottom should be its maximum. So if you draw that in terms of a free body diagram, we'll have something like this. So let me just get this, copy it. So now well, the, the only difference is instead of it being uniform, let's draw it showing zero at the top, maximum at the bottom. Okay. And then this F is no longer acting at the center. It's acting in a different manner. Okay, so let me just remove that and that there. And then let's draw what's happening. Okay. So zero here, so point there, and then going downward to so this maximum point, okay? This is the actual pressure distribution. And then we have that, okay? So instead of it like looking uniform this way, it's actually looking like this. Right, and again, force is not at the center, force is somewhere closer to the bottom. So let's say here, okay, and then reactions rest the same. So now we have this diagram. The problem here, or the first problem we'll encounter, is what is F then? Because usually, solving for F in our derivation of equations, F is simply pressure times area. Right, area being the projected area. We can do that here because now pressure isn't uniformly distributed. So when we have something like this, just know that F is simply the volume of the pressure diagram. Okay. Therefore, if this is my pressure diagram, so let's try to draw, separate that, okay? We have a right triangle, right? And then it has a thickness. So it looks like a wedge. Okay, can anybody tell me what's the equation for the volume of a wedge? Very good verse, Eman. It's one half base times height times length, or simply the area of this side, which is a right triangle, times this thickness. Okay, area of a right triangle is one half base times height, and then times thickness. T. Okay, so now let's figure out those values. What is that base of our right triangle? It's simply this value over here. Okay, that's the base, and remember. That correlates to the maximum pressure, okay? Because this is a pressure diagram. Therefore, again, zero at the top, maximum at the bottom, and that's simply uh, gamma H. H being the total height of your water. Okay, so that's B. What about thickness? Thickness is this, which corresponds to the diameter of your cylinder. So this is B. So finally, this is just one half base gamma H, Right, times height h, okay, times thickness, which is your b. Okay, let's simplify. So f is simply one half gamma, and gamma is 62.4. 
But again, that's pounds per cubic feet. Let's add the conversion factor so that everything is in inches. So that's 1 over 12 cube. Right? That's what we did here. And then H. I'm sorry, this is H. H times H, we'll just have an H squared here times D, which is 22. Again, that's in feet. So I got to convert that to inches. So times 12 again. So you can do what we did here, where we just kept the equation and we'll just sub it in our solution later. Or you can already solve for it in this stage. So let's try solving for it. I'm going to give you the answer. If you try 1 half 62.4, times 1 over 12 cubed, times 22, times 12, you should get something like 143 point uh, over 30. So I use the fraction form, not the decimal. You can practice yourself. You should get this, okay? And then, of course, we have your variable each squared. All right, now we have an equation for force. What's the next step? Since, again, I'm looking for H. So the next step is to try to relate that force to your tension forces, your resistance forces. And to do that, we'll create another free diagram. Okay, but instead of 3D, we'll do it 2D now. So that's your front view of your water or cylinder. This is your water surface, okay? And then apply your forces. This tension force T is simply acting at the center, okay, this is your T. And remember this height is H. Okay, and then what about your um, hydrostatic force? Where is that now? So that is somewhere, again, closer to the water surface, okay? Uh, closer to the bottom. And let's draw the pressure diagram again. This is the pressure diagram, okay? Yeah. And then again, uh, the hydrostatic force somewhere here. This is your F. So now let's apply those. All right. So someone asked, why do we make it 2D? So that it's easier to create your equation so you can see the relationship between the distances and the force itself. We can do it 3D. You can draw it this way, okay? can redraw your tension this way, force this way, okay? And then this is your distance h over 2, distance h over 2, and then get this distance from this edge. But as you can see, it just looks a bit messier if your drawings aren't clear. So that's why I did it in 2D. Yeah, because as you can see, it's just a direct surface, uh, vertical and horizontal lines. Yeah, just 2D is just easier. But again, you can use 3D if you want. All right, so this is your 2D. Again, as I've mentioned earlier, tension is acting at the center of your cross-sectional area experiencing stress. So this means that this distance is simply whatever height this water has over 2. Okay, because again, at the center. In the same manner, your force is also acting at the center, but not of your tank. It's at the center of your pressure diagram. And your pressure diagram is in the form of a triangular prism. So as you can see, this is just a triangle. So that is acting at the center of this triangle. Does anyone remember where the center of a triangle is in relation to this base? Okay. Very good, Cyrus. And it's at the centroid, but what's the distance of the centroid from the bottom, from the base of your triangle? Correct, Eman. Very good. It's one third. So this is one third height distance from the base. So one third h or h over 3. Okay? Because again, recall your math classes. If you have a triangle, centroid is somewhere here, and it's always one-third, whatever dimension it has, from the straight edges. So this is one-third, this is also one-third. Okay? And in contrast, this is two-thirds. 
So remember your geometry. Okay, now I have this. If you've noticed, this is a non-concurrent force system. Okay, and remember, what do we do with non-concurrent force systems? We use moment. Okay, so to uh, give you an example, let's say we have a truss, right? What do we do when we solve for forces? We take moment about the other support. So same thing here, we take, we take moment about a certain point. And that point will be over here. It's called that point A. Now why you might ask, because usually you take moment about where your system can rotate. And for a vessel, your cylinder or vessel rotates along its edges. So I'll use this point. Okay. All right, so moment about that point A equals zero. Let's start with tension. Now there's something here about tension. If you looked at our 3D diagram, there's two of them. Okay, so this is this isn't simply P. Okay, so to be more accurate, that's twice P. Because we're looking at it in 2D, but in 3D, as you can see, there's two of them. So 2T. So 2T rotate about A, that's clockwise, therefore positive 2T. And then distance of that force to A is H over 2. Next F, rotate about A counterclockwise. So negative F, distance, H over 3 equals 0. And then now, Simplify, I can cancel out H, we get 2. Uh, I can also cancel out 2. And I'll just transpose this to the right, so I'll be left with T. Equal uh, to T, just T, equals F. F times 1 third. Okay, now T. This T is the same resisting tensile force as what we've been solving for or using in our previous examples. So therefore, that T is also just your stress along this area times this area, right? Because stress equals force over area. So T, stress A. Now, the question is, what's that A? Again, A, area of this. And that's simply a rectangle, so base times height. This is the thickness of your walls, and then this is height. So pH equals F. We have an equation for F. So let's just use that. 143 over 30H squared. Okay, I forgot to square. Squared times one third. Okay, now let's just simplify further and then sub our values. H cancels out once more. Sigma. And this is the stress along the length of your cylinder. Hence, if you remember, stress along that portion is your tangential stress. So this is sigma t. Therefore, that's 6,000. 6,000 times thickness, which is 1 half, equals 143 over 30 h times 1 third. So from this, you can solve what's h. Correct, Jan and Mariah. Cavero Guico. Very good. It's 1,888.11 inches, or again, you can use feet since it's not specified. So just divide by 12, you'll get 157. Point thirty four feet. And that's our answer. Now let's compare that to what we had in the first assumption, your uniform pressure distribution. For this, the maximum height your cylinder can take for water is simply 54 feet. For actual, it's 157, so it's three times the amount, right? So this is an example of why sometimes it's better to not solve for the ideal situation, but for the actual situation. Because as you can see, if you use this, you're limiting your pressure or your vessel. Okay. Your pressure can actually hold up to this amount. So 
So there are instances where it's better to not design so conservatively. So this is a very conservative solution, meaning it's very, or the allowed height is much less than the actual height it can carry. Okay, so that's it for number four. If you have any questions for number four, please answer in the chat. No questions, great. Let's now have number five. Number five. The strength of longitudinal joint in the figure is 33 kips per feet, whereas for the girth is 16 kips per feet. Calculate the maximum diameter of the cylinder tank if the internal pressure is 150 PSI. Okay, we're looking for diameter given stresses. So first, let's analyze what these stresses are. You have long stress, or rather strength, for longitudinal joint, okay, which is also, again, similar to just its allowable stress. So we can write sigma L for stress on the longitudinal joint, and then sigma sub G for stress along the girth. You can do that, and then just analyze later. But for you guys, let's try analyzing first so that our solution is shorter. Let's focus on the strength of longitudinal joint, okay? This is the longitudinal joint. I'll cut isolate so we can see better what's happening there. So I'm going to cut isolate the bottom portion. Okay, so cutting, isolating, just a rough sketch. Okay. And so cut isolating, and then this is where the stress happens, right? Now that looks familiar, right? Can anybody tell me what's the stress acting on, on this portion of a cylindrical vessel? Correct. Uh, Emmanuel and Chloe. Rico Makarohan. Tangential, right? Well, let me refresh your mind. There. So you can see it's the same as the stress along this portion, and that's tangential stress. So that's your sigma t. And that was 33 kips per feet. Now that looks weird. If you remember, right, stress is in PSI, KSI, MPA, etc. And that's in pounds per square inch and newton per millimeter squared. So it's force over unit squared. This is just force over unit. So what's up with that? When you have a unit like that, that simply means this is the strength or stress per unit length or per thickness. Okay. So this is just considering one unit thickness of your material. Hence, that's not the entire strength of your uh, cylinder. So to resolve that, that just means this is per thickness T. Okay, so when you have a unit like this where it's just force over uh, a dimensional unit, so let's say Newton per meter, that's not the entire strength or stress yet. That's just simply stress or strength per thickness of material. So per thickness, so per T, okay? And then the same way, we have this girth, 16 kips per feet. Girth is along this portion. So let's cut isolate. I'm gonna cut isolate this right portion. Okay, again, rough sketch. That's where we cut. This is where the stress will be. Okay, your stress will show there. And that, again, that looks a bit familiar, right? Can anybody tell me what's the stress along this portion of a cylindrical vessel? Correct, Mary and Benedict. Correct, Salazar. It's longitudinal stress because again, this is 
where your longitudinal <clears throat> longitudinal stress lies. So this is simply sigma L. And again, it's in kips per feet. And that's fine. You already know what that means. That means 16 kips per feet per thickness. And then finally, we have internal pressure 150 psi. Now remember, I've been mentioning this before. Right? In solving, the amount of stress, given stress we have, would equal the amount of equations that we need to solve for. However, we have an additional condition for thin walled pressure vessels, right? We already know for thin walled pressure vessels, tangential stress is critical, meaning it's the only one you need to solve for when looking for maximum forces and minimum dimension. So you can apply that here. So use sigma t since critical. Okay? So sigma t equals PD over 2T. Sigma T is 33 kips per feet per thickness. And look, our uh, pressure is in PSI. So you have two choices here. You can either convert this to PSI or you can convert this to kips and feet. Okay, let's do the former. I'm going to convert this to PSI. So Kips, we already know one kip equals 1,000 pounds. Okay, and then feet, one foot, 12 inches. So these are your conversion factors. And then equals P, 150, D, diameter over 2T. Okay, and as you can see, we can cancel out the thickness. And then from this, you can solve for D. What's the answer? Wala pang recitation points dyan. Practice your calculator. Okay, correct, Emmanuel and Cyrus. Scenario Bico. Yes, correct, Chloe as well. It's thirty six point sixty seven inches. And again, you can also just answer in feet, which is just dividing by 12. So that's 3.06 feet. And that's our final answer. Okay. Now, in case you forgot that concept where for thin wall pressure vessels, tangential stress is your critical stress, you can just solve as usual. So you're done now with tangential. You can solve now for longitudinal PD over 40. Solving for that. You're going through this process, you'll eventually get your D as 35.56 inches or 2.96 feet. Now let's compare. Okay, these are the minimum diameters needed to carry the certain pressure. Okay, now if you chose 2.96, your tangential stress needs at least 3.06. Therefore, this will fail. Your longitudinal joint will fail. Okay, because again, it needs 3.06. If you chose this, that's less than that. Okay, so even though going through that, you'll have your final answer D max 3.06 feet. Okay, so you'll arrive at the same answer. You're just your solution will just be a bit longer. Okay, so it's fine. So it pays to know that oh, sigma t is critical. Okay, now another thing. You might be confused. This is a longitudinal joint, which corresponds to tangential stress. So it's a bit like an opposite thing, right? However, to clear things up, yes, that's a longitudinal joint because it's a joint along the length of your cylinder. However, your stress itself is acting tangent 
to that length, right? This is your circle, right? And then okay, if you complete that circle, your tangent, uh, your stress is tangential to that circle, hence tangential stress, okay? So longitudinal joy corresponds to tangential stress. Just keep that in mind. All right, and that's number five. Any questions for number five? Please answer in the chat. No questions? Great. Let's have the final problem for today. Number six. Number six, a pipe carrying steam at 3.5 MPA has an outside diameter of 450 millimeters and a wall thickness of 10 millimeters. A gasket is inserted between the flange at one end of the pipe and a flat plate used to cap at the end. How many 40 millimeter diameter bolts must be used to hold the cap on if the allowable stress in the bolts is 80 MPA, of which 55 MPA is the initial stress? What circumferential stress is developed in the pipe? Okay, let's analyze what's happening here. We have your pipe covered by a cap, and between them, it's a gasket. So, a gasket is a mechanical sealer that prevents any leakage into and away from the pipe. Okay, so it's again there to just prevent any leaking. And then what's happening here is this pipe carries steam with this pressure, hence there's going to be force. And then the portion of the pipe that we're concerned with is at the end. Because at the end, we have your cap. Now, the cap is not the one resisting the pressure or the, high, uh, the force because of the pressure. It's the bolts, okay? The bolts are the one carrying the load or resisting that pressure. So as you can see in this diagram, you already see F, your force due to pressure, resisted by P. This P is not pressure, okay? This P is the resisting force from the bolts. These are your bolts. Okay, each bolt resisting that, so in total, we have this capital P, right? So that's the premise of our solution. Now, let's write first our given. Given pipe carrying steam, 3.5 MPA, that's the internal pressure. Okay, and then we have outside diameter, 450. I'll call that BO. 450 millimeters, wall thickness 10 millimeters. We also have diameter of bolts, I'll call that DB, 40 millimeters. And then allowable stress in bolt 80 MPA, I'll call that sigma B for stress in bolts 80 MPA. And then 55, of which is initial stress, I'll just call that sigma I, 55 MPA. So that's it. Let's focus first on the first question, how many bolts do we need? Okay. So before we move on to the solution for how many bolts, let's talk about this. We have allowable stress in bolts and initial stress. Initial stress, that's new, right? It's the first time we heard of it. Well, if you remember, for certain situations, your bolt can already experience stress just because of the process of screwing it in. If you remember in our shearing stress, bearing stress example, right, we had a bolt which also experiences its stress, your tensile stress, just because of its connection. So that could happen here as well. Your connecting pipe and cap already exerts pressure or stress on the bolt. Okay, before. Uh, any pressure from the pipe itself. So that's what that initial stress means. There's already stress acting on your bolt before even considering your pipe. So to resolve that, that just means we have less of a working stress, right? Because remember, working stress is what we need in solving for our solution or in solving for what's given. So working stress is simply the total allowable stress in the bulk, which is sigma b, and then subtracted by what's already being experienced, your initial stress, sigma i. So that's just 80 minus 55, 
which is 25. Okay. So this is now what we'll work with. Not this, not this, it's this, right? That's the stress allowed further because of the pressure in the pipe. Okay, so that's out of the way. Now let's actually solve for this. Let me copy the free body diagram. Once again, the drawing is given to us. You can just copy it, right? Summation of forces. Well, zero F minus P equals zero, hence F equals P. Again, F is the force due to the pressure inside your cylinder or pipe, hence the equation can be written as PA. And then this. That's the force along the bolts. So depending on how many bolts we have, your reaction will be distributed evenly. So hence, we just take the number of bolts, so that's N, times the allowable stress in each bolt, so sigma W times area of the bolt, A. Because if you've noticed, in our equilibrium equations, F just corresponds to pressure times area. And then T, P, whatever on the other side just corresponds to stress or uh, allowable stress times area experiencing stress, right? Even for this um, here, right? Our force is just simply yeah, over here. Our resisting forces is simply the stress times the area experiencing stress. So it's the same all throughout. Even here, that's just stress times area experiencing stress. OK, now let's figure out what these are. Now you might think, oh, area, area, cancel out. No. Okay, again, this is area for pipe, area for bolt. OK, so P, let's create, an, uh, let's create equations for each. So P times A. Again, this is the area due to pressure. If we looked at our derivation for equations in our previous topics, we have this, right? This is your F. And the area in question is this, the area of a circle. So that's what we'll have here as well. The area in question for the pipe, since it's also a cylinder, is just the area of a circle. Now, we don't actually have the area of a circle yet. So let's draw that. Okay, what we have is just outside diameter. But if you remember what was mentioned previously, we don't need the area of or the outer diameter. What we need is inner diameter. Okay. So let's imagine that as the cross section of your pipe. Their outer diameter given. And it's this. And that's 450. Okay. Now, if you remember, what we need is inner diameter of your cylinder. This is what I want. Okay. That's your D. That's the D in the equations. And we're also given thickness of our pipe. And that's this thickness. So P, 10. 10. 
So based on this drawing, can anybody give me what is the value of our inner diameter D? Correct, Stephen? Who else? And work H as well as Christine. Uh, yeah, Christina, Mariah. The answer is four thirty. Why? Because that's just outer diameter minus ten minus ten. So 430. Okay. Now that we have that, this is not the area experiencing the hydrostatic force, okay? The actual area experiencing hydrostatic force is this, the end of the cap, this portion. So that area is simply the area of a circle, so the equation is pi over 4d squared. Equals n, sigma w. A is area of a bolt, so area of a bolt, and for a bolt, we already know cross-section is a circle as well. So pi over 4, diameter of the bolt squared. As you can see, we can cancel out pi over 4. Now let's plug in our values. Pressure 3.5. D, 430. N is what we're looking for. Sigma W is 25. Diameter of bolt also given 40 squared. Let's see if we have consistent units. Pressure, MPA, Newton millimeter, 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 uh, MPA, millimeter. Okay, everything consistent. We can solve what's N. Correct, Eric and Christian. Danaga, Abdul. Eighteen. Now, of course, we can't have like a portion of a bolt. So you have to round off. So say something. Now the question is round down, round up. If we round down, we get 16, which is less than what we need. So your system will fail. So for bolts, we always round up. So say 17 bolts. Okay. Okay, so that's letter A. Now let's have the second part, letter B, which is looking for circumferential stress. And remember, circumferential stress is also tangential stress, which has the equation PB over 2T. P given 3.5D, we know to be 430 over twice thickness, also given 10. From this, we solve what's sigma T. Correct, Eric and Steven. Porca Pablo. Very good. It's 75.25. Then you need MPA since it's all in Newton millimeter and MPA. And that's it for number six. Any questions for number six, please answer in the chat. Okay, no questions, great. That ends our topic for module one. We're now done with everything for module one. So this Saturday, you will have your quiz number one. Coverage is everything until shearing stress and bearing stress. So this thin walled pressure vessel is not included yet. And reminders for your quiz, please join the Zoom meeting. It's 1.30 to 3. Open camera, no camera, no score. Open notes as well. Okay. And then next week, we will have a group activity. So please prepare to group yourselves probably by five or six members so you can prepare now. And then I'll also ask you to group yourselves next week on Tuesday. Okay, and then next week, Saturday, your modular exam coverage is everything, including this thin-walled pressure vessels. All right? So any questions, clarifications? 
Okay, none. So another thing, for those who haven't answered your seat work yet, you only have until this Saturday to answer it. So please complete your requirements. You always have a week to answer all requirements. Okay, since you don't have any more questions, I'll see you on Saturday. You may go. Bye, class. Thank you, ma'am. Thank, ma thank, thank you, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. Welcome.